Today, floppy disks are about to die. The new 4080 Super is just sad. NVIDIA just teamed up with Intel, and AMD made it official. Welcome everyone to Gamer Metal. First up for today, while the floppy disk has been on life support for years now, it looks like doctors are about to pull the plug. Of course, if you were born sometime in the last two and a half decades, this may be the first time you've even heard the term. If so, it's a removable magnetic storage media that was invented in the early 70s. These floppy disks, named for the floppy round disk inside the plastic housing, come in multiple sizes with a standard storage of just 1.44 megabytes. Yeah, that's megabytes. And these were replaced Placed by CDs, then DVDs, all the way up until we get to modern thumb drives. So you might be wondering why anyone would still use such old, large, and outdated technology. And that's where today's first story comes in. Up until just last week, the Japanese government has required the use of floppy disks or CD-ROMs when submitting certain applications to the government. In fact, according to Tom's Hardware, there were about 1,900 official applications that required it. But just recently, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry stop those requirements. Now, we're not sure if it's going to take time to update all of these procedures or if it'll happen immediately, but one thing is for certain. Floppy disks' days are numbered. Believe it or not, there are some companies and old machines in the U.S. that are still using floppy disks, but according to the last floppy disk business in the U.S., it's got four years left. Unfortunately, that was a year and a half ago, so it's not looking good. That business bought up a couple million floppy disks when the last producer or Sony ended production over 10 years ago. As of 2022, he only had half a million left. Basically, with supply ending and demand slowly waning, floppy disks can soon begin their eternal slumber. But first, my laptop does not have a lot of ports to say the least, and I like to use an external monitor, I need an SD card reader for my camera, an actual mouse, and more. Needless to say, the ports I have are not enough. Luckily, I've been trying out this new 10-in-1 USB-C docking station from today's sponsor, Ugreen. And let's just say it solves all of my problems. It's called the Revadoc Pro 210, and it not only fixes my need for an SD card slot and more USB, it also comes with 100 watt power delivery so I can charge my laptop while using all of these ports. I mean, this bad boy comes with two HDMI ports for two 4K displays at 60 Hertz or a single 8K monitor at 30 hertz. It also has a 5 gigabit USB-C port, a USB-A 3.0 port, two USB-A 2.0 ports, that 100 watt power delivery with 85 watt pass through charging to the USB-C, CAT6 Ethernet, and an SD slash micro SD card reader. Meaning you could take one USB-C port and turn it into all of this. And they've even got this 13-in-1 Revadoc Pro 313 for even more. Basically, give your notebook everything it needs and more by visiting the link in the description below. Next up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 4080 Super is finally here, and it's exactly what we thought. Actually, I'd say it's a bit worse. In terms of performance, the 4080 Super is around 2% faster or even less than the regular 4080. I mean, we're getting into the margin of error difference here. And don't forget that what I'm showing you here are averages of multiple games. So some games may show a little difference, but others essentially have zero difference. Of course, while we knew the 4080 Super had the smallest core increase out of all the Super cards, I didn't know it would be this bad. Basically, think of it as a 4080 that's been discounted by $200. In fact, I'm sort of confused why they even made this GPU. I mean, it certainly would have been easier to just make an official price drop announcement for the 4080. But alas, here we are. And if you're interested in picking one up, I'll have a couple affiliate links down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. And next up, NVIDIA has reportedly teamed up with an unlikely rival in a wild move to churn out more GPUs. This story originally comes from the Taiwan Economic Daily, who claims that Intel has received a pretty massive order from NVIDIA to supply the company's chip on wafer on substrate advanced packaging. Remember that this was one of the main reasons NVIDIA has been constrained in making their H100 accelerators. And with demand through the roof, the company has enlisted Intel's help to make, according to this report, 
around 5,000 wafers per month. This is apparently set to increase Nvidia's production by 10%, really showing just how many GPUs the company sells. With that said, TSMC isn't taking this laying down, as DigiTimes recently reported on some pretty big output increases by the end of this year, with even more coming next year. As always, this shows the power of competition, forcing other companies to do what's needed to stay ahead of their competition. Not to mention the fact that according to this, Nvidia is actually planning to work with their longtime rival to keep customers satisfied. And lastly for today, AMD made it official. During their recent Q4 earnings call, the company's CEO, Lisa Su, stated, quote, Looking at 2024, we are planning for the PC TAM to grow modestly year on year, weighted towards the second half as AI PCs ramp. We continue to see strong growth opportunities for our client business as we ramp our current products, extend our AI PC leadership, and launch our next wave of Zen 5 CPUs. Then later on, she said, quote, We also see Turin, our Zen 5 product coming in the second half of the year. And that last part made people sort of think that AMD is only planning to launch their Turin Epic processors this year, even though they did seem to mention regular Zen 5 CPUs. But thanks to a tweet from Paul Alcorn from Tom's Hardware, an AMD rep confirmed to him that Zen 5 is on track for the consumer market in the second half of this year. Basically, AMD looks to have confirmed that their desktop Ryzen 9000 are in fact coming this year. Now, it technically could be referring to Zen 5 Strix point, but a recent tweet from this known leaker on Twitter claimed that Zen 5 X3D is coming January of 2025. And given X3D typically comes months after the regular CPU release, I definitely think we can expect Ryzen 9000 to come later this year. Not to mention the fact that AMD's own Zen 5 roadmap shows that desktop Granite Ridge is set for release in 2024, meaning AMD is simply confirming the next-gen desktop CPUs are coming this year, specifically in the second half. Half. Fingers crossed that AMD keeps pricing in check. So while that does it for today, what next-gen CPU are you most looking forward to? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Ugreen's awesome doc down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!